Stanky Framsker with another wacky sound education. Today is a continuation of lesson six, where we were covering mixing, but we ran out of time to show you some examples. In this video, we give two examples of mixing. One is a live mix that we did at our church recently, and the second is professional recording mix to really give you a demonstration of the full capability that mixing has and the quality of sound that can be produced. Headphone alert. Most computers do not have the sound quality that you need to be able to hear the differences that we're gonna demonstrate during this video. So be sure to get yourself a good set of headphones and plug them in when we're playing the music and showing you how mixing works. Today you get to see some of those good practices that an ideal sound person uses. You have to get there early and get everything up and ready so that when the musicians and everyone else shows up, the sound system is ready to go. In many permanent systems, the power amps are located up near the stage where they are close to the house speakers. But in many settings like this, there's a main power conditioner that turns on everything with one switch. It's always best with permanent settings to refer to the people that own the equipment in this case, there are signs here that explain how to do the turn on. Turn the power on in these power conditioners, and that's going to send power to all the system, including the mixing board back there in the back. The power amps are to be turned on last, and so I, the volume on those are all turned down. I turn those on. Power apps are coming up. The last thing I do after turning those on is I bring the volume up on each of those. I've turned everything on. I think things are working. It's best to come up and give it a try. Test one, two. I've got live mics. I've got keyboards and the microphone here at the keyboard works as well. So we're all set and ready to go. All we're doing now is just waiting for the musicians to show up. And musicians are notably always late, especially the drummer. Look, the musicians have actually shown up, including the drummer. And we've got our sound guy here this morning. And he's put on some pleasing background music. Okay, here we are, everybody's set up and they're ready for their first song. I'll narrate while we watch Chris, our ideal sound guy, perform his duties. Recall that during the band's practice session, this is the time to get the monitor system properly adjusted and to be bold in making changes to get the best sound possible out of the house speakers. Here we see Chris making initial adjustments to the house sound. Next, Chris leaves the soundboard and goes up on stage so he can hear the mix in the monitor system. He switches his listening skills from thinking about a perfect blend for the audience to thinking about how well can the singers hear themselves and do they have enough instrumental volume to stay on key and on beat. We see one of the singers describing what she is hearing and asking for some adjustments. Notice how easy the communication flows, because the band members know our ideal sound guy is an integral part of the band and is there to help in any way possible. And now Chris is coming back to the board to make those adjustments. As I described in lesson six, the sound guy may have to make multiple trips back and forth between the stage and the soundboard until the band is happy with the monitor mix. The sound guy is making contact with the singer and getting and giving visual cues that the changes may have really improved the sound for the requester. Once the monitor mix is satisfactory, Chris adjusts the EQ and house mix to improve the sound for the audience. He then leaves the soundboard and walks out into the room to check the sound out where the audience will be sitting. As he's walking around, there is more discussion from some of the singers that they would like further adjustments to the monitor system. Live sound is very dynamic and each song may present a new mixing challenge. You must also learn to deal with a variety of personalities. At times, all this may be frustrating, but with a true servant's heart, listen to the musician's requests and try to satisfy their needs. I'm now going to demonstrate the mixing technique I described in Lesson 6 where, one channel at a time, I bring the volume up very loud until I can hear it clearly and then drop it back into the mix at a level that seems right to my ears. In this example, I'll first bring up the male vocal, then each of the three female vocals, then the drum, keyboard, and guitar. Listen carefully. I will follow you. If this life I lose, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah. Hide into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone, you're the one I seek, 
knowing I will find all I need in you alone. In you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. When you love, I'll love. When you serve, I'll serve. This was a demonstration of what you should be hearing in the house speakers as each channel is brought up loudly and then faded back into the mix. To save time, I moved through the channels very quickly and you'd probably want to move a little slower and experiment more with the mix in reality. It is important to note that the performers will be completely unaware that you're doing this since most of what they're hearing is coming from the monitors. So feel free to experiment all you want during rehearsal. This is the time to be bold and come up with the best mix for the audience. Now you can see that the audience has arrived and we are in the middle of live performance. All the changes made by our ideal sound guy to the house sound will be very subtle and will go unnoticed by the audience. Because, as you recall from lesson six, our ideal sound guy is invisible. My objective with the final half of this video is to help you train your ears to hear better and train your brain to process the sound better. We're going to listen to a song by budding young artist songwriter named Lenny who is backed by professional musicians in a Nashville recording studio. I'm going to start off by playing the very beginning of the song which starts off relatively simple in terms of the number of instruments and there's a single vocalist and what I'd like for you to do during this part of the song is pay attention to the relative volume of each of the instruments and how the mix is allowing you to distinguish between each of the individual instruments. He'd give you the shirt off his back Whatever you needed, he'd give you that He'd try to put a smile on your face Somehow make you a better day if you asked him why he'd say The good Lord loves me You might have to listen to it several times to pick up on this, but what I think I heard was a drum kit that was being played with brushes, a rhythm guitar in the background, a high-pitched mandolin, and an electric guitar that was also noodling out a individual tune. I think that was just a wonderful mix by John Jewell, Jewell Tones. Happens to be a friend of mine that lives in uh, Culpeper. Uh, some of the instruments are in the right channel, some are in the left channel, some are in both. And it does a great job of illustrating the way what I described earlier, which was using the sound to paint a 3D picture. You thought perhaps that the instruments were filling the whole space, but when Eleni's voice comes in, it's out in front and really is the feature of the entire piece. Start out starts out with instruments and Eleni's voice then become comes to the forefront when she finally starts singing. Boy, what a tedious, complicated way of describing the mix. If you just sit back and listen to the music and enjoy it, you don't think about all those details. But it is all those details that make music enjoyable. And I wanted to point out, as I've said before, that the musician's ability to separate their instruments in the song, either by timing of when they play or by frequency of which they're playing. The mandolin is high, the rhythm guitar is on its own octave, and the electric guitar. Each of those four instruments are on different octaves or on different notes so that they never step on each other and you can distinguish them one from the other. Also, Eleni's voice is brought to the forefront by its own distinct sound and is distinguished from the instruments and not stepped on by the instruments. So this kind of mixing is what you have the ability to do when you're laying down soundtracks recording and you've got a good pair of earphones to hear the result. But when we're mixing live sound, even if we were able to 
do that good a job of mixing. The acoustics in the room will oftentimes blend all of the sounds together. So do not expect to hear that kind of quality in live sound mixing, but I just wanted to make you aware or conscious of the fine tuning you can do with a mixing board. Let's listen to the first couple of verses of the song again. We get to another section where more instruments come in and there are backup vocalists. And if you can, maybe close your eyes and just imagine the painting in 3D that's being done. You'll hear that Eleni's voice, the lead singer's voice, is still a little louder than the backup and accompaniment, and therefore it's out in front. The accompaniment vocals are, are behind her, as well as as the other instruments fill in the space in terms of timing and just the uh, amount of strings being played. But even though they're filling in, they're still very distinguishable and very distinct. Makes for a very pleasurable song. I'll play the first two verses. He'd give you the shirt off his back Whatever you needed He'd give you that He'd try to put a smile on your face Somehow make you a better day but If you asked him why he'd say The good Lord loves me When it's all said and done I just want to help someone Trying to follow In the footsteps of his love I just want to help, I just want to help someone She'd listen to what you have to say Hold you and tell you it's gonna be okay and the bruise, no matter what they're going through And she'd be quick to tell you The good Lord loves me when it's all said and done I just want to help someone Trying to follow in the footsteps of his love I just want to help And that wraps up lesson number six with our demonstration of mixing capabilities. Join us for other lessons where we cover specific sound systems and specific equipment. Stanky Framps here signing off with another wacky sound education.